Hi everybody, I'm Neil and welcome to Nitro Tech. Now today's review is the Acme 8 scale dune buggy. It's an electric vehicle, it's in this box here. And the box is probably kind of, I would say, what, three shoe boxes kind of size. Um, maybe ooh, four kilos, something like that, quite lightweight. Comes uh, as a ready to run model, so let's check it out. Now the box itself is really great looking with a, an actual picture of the actual model that's inside. And there's a few bits of specification information on the front, uh, including, uh, I, I see here, it refers to it being as a 10th scale electric um, vehicle. That's not actually uh, the case, it is a proper full 8th scale. As you can see, uh, we've got the model on display straight away. Uh, I like the way that um, Agme always package their models uh, really well with these uh, foam inserts which uh, are, are cut out around the wheel so it, uh, the model's going to be held secure there. Uh, and traditionally, typically for, for Acme also, they've uh, packaged the radio gear in a, in a separate carton in the end. So with everything out on the table, what have we got? Well, obviously we've got our buggy and I think it looks fantastic. Um, it was a, a, a real joy to see a body shell and a car design that uh, resembles some scale here and you know has some nice detail and features. Uh, it just seems these days that uh, we end up with a lot of jelly mold style bodies and it's a, a real uh, break from that when you see something that's had a bit of thought and design and uh, look uh, about it, even down to the inclusion of a driver. You possibly can't see it from where you are but we'll we'll get, touch on that a bit later on. Um, moving around we've got a 2.4 gigahertz steer wheel controller uh, there's quite a few uh, additional features to uh, standard uh, so we'll talk about that in a couple of minutes. Uh, we get a instruction manual and a set of uh, pre-cut stickers to uh, finish our body design off. Uh, obviously you don't have to use those if you don't want to. Um, and of course a mains charger for the main battery for the car. Now onto the buggy itself. Now it uh, has a huge amount of allure and appeal. Uh, certainly for me, at least, with the eight scale proportions of it, it's it's really big. Uh, which was also going to help with it uh, tackling the rougher terrain uh, and also uh, with the jumps and what have you. So it's it's certainly uh, going to perform very well. Um, it's relatively lightweight too. Um, having said that, the main weight that is in the car is over the uh, rear end, so the weight bias is towards the rear. Now another part of the appeal for me at least is this uh, scale body and the uh, wing that's on the back here. It really does um, feel like a replica of those uh, sand uh, racers that you may well have seen and true to the uh, the way that those cars are set up this is rear wheel drive with that, um, with that ethos carried through. Now as well as uh, being a great performer, this is it looks fantastic with the inclusion of um, a driver in the cockpit and these off-road lights that kind of all add to the uh, overall effect. Now the great thing about these lights, I was really quite surprised, is that they actually work. Now I'm just going to flick the switch on and you'll be able to see them come alive. There we go. And you hear that beep then? That was actually the uh, radio gear saying that it's connected to the handset. Now, just off camera, I have the radio switched on. So that's a reassuring sound when you switch it on that uh, your uh, radio is connected and bound properly with the receiver. Now the other noise that you can hear is uh, the fan on the electronic speed controller and uh, that really is a purposeful uh, little inclusion on the speedo because the amount of power that this motor can produce really uh, requires uh, that cooling element. Now I've actually driven this uh, particular model and uh, I was really uh, quite enjoyed doing so because uh, one thing that doesn't come across until you do drive it is how supple the chassis is uh, at handling the, the bumps and what have you. It's uh, quite difficult to destabilize um, and part of that is due to the, uh, the the size of the wheels and there's actually quite a lot of travel and uh, uh, in the tire wall side walls themselves but also the uh, suspension travel is very smooth and there's plenty of it I mean the the model probably has at least uh, sort of five or six well, possibly about five or six uh, centimeters ground clearance on the chassis alone, uh, and then obviously you've got uh, the all of that uh, travel in the suspension, and there's uh, there's a lot of articulation that you can get going with this buggy, so it really soaks up the terrain. 
Now underneath, uh, you can see we've got this uh, durable resin chassis and the uh, body shell does extend beyond that. And uh, I just quite like that because it just means that I can get your hand in, you can get your hand in to the on-off switch, which is actually located somewhere just behind the driver. So although uh, you've got those gaps underneath, they're really quite useful. Now, uh, because of the scale look of this uh, vehicle, it did take me a bit of time to figure out how you get the body shell off. And it's actually pretty straightforward. Um, on the back of this uh, uh, roll cage, it just basically unclips one, two, and then there are four body clips one, two, and there's another two just down the back here, tucked out of way so they don't spoil the look of the car too much. So there's four there. So one, two, three, four body clips. I'll just pop those off and we'll take a look at the chassis without the body shell on. Okay, so I've unclipped the body shell and it's uh, to one side. Now you see obviously that we've got the wires still to the light so I can literally just unplug those. And then the body shell is completely separated. And it's a great looking body shell, again as, uh, as always finished on the inside so you can't scratch the outside. Now actually while I'm talking about the outside of the body shell, before you get into putting your stickers on, you need to remove, you'll just see there's like a, a little plastic film over stuck on the body shell. Now although it's very shiny to you there, if, uh, if you just stick your stickers on, uh, you know, it's, it will look okay but you won't get the full effect of the really clear shiny uh, bodywork unless you peel that protective layer on off and then uh, obviously put your stickers on afterwards. So with the body shell out of the way we can start to appreciate the layout of the car. Now with it being rear wheel drive only there's no transmission bits and pieces to get to the front and so the chassis can be perfectly balanced by placing everything on the centre line. So I've just done taken these uh, body clips out of here and we can get to our battery underneath. Now, as I said before, this is um, uh, a Li Poly battery, which is very lightweight, much lighter than uh, traditional NICADs. And the self-contained, very easy to use, very easy to plug in. The plug can only uh, be connected to the car in one way. You can't kind of get the polarity wrong. They have a balance lead or charger uh, in lead separate to them uh, and a really bomb proof. Now, uh, it's probably a good idea um, to get you, yourself a second one of these because you can have one on charge and the other one in the car while you're using it and almost go non-stop. Now with the battery out of the way, uh, also what's worth noting is in the car are these little foam blocks that bolster the battery in. Now there's a slightly uh, wider one there and just at the back, and I'll just get this one out, if I can get it out, there's a slightly smaller one. There we are. So you could actually slide the battery forwards and backwards in that uh, central slot uh, to adjust the uh, weight balance of the car, front and rear. Or you could in fact take one, one out and weight, um, weight the front or weight the rear more, depending on how you want your, uh, your uh, buggy to drive. So I thought that was really quite nice. Looking forward of the battery, we've got the foam piece I was just talking about. We've got a standard size servo laid down low to the chassis, uh, which is connected through this linkage into a servo saver. I don't know whether you can just about get in and see there. So that will take any of the uh, knocks. So if your front suspension um, steering linkage gets a, a knock, uh, that will take the impact uh, ahead of the steering servo. So it's going to be good and reliable. The front suspension itself uh, features uh, obviously these uh, oil filled uh, coiled over shocks with uh, threaded shock bodies but also the steering linkages here are adjustable for towing with the uh, this turnbuckle and also the front wheels adjustable for camber by adjusting this turnbuckle. Now the front hubs are ball raced, the uh, front axles are ball raced so if we can look in there you can see it's actually a ball bearing arrangement for the front axles uh, and also uh, you'll be able to make out just there we've got the vent hole in the front wheels to let the air in and out of the tyres as you go over that tough terrain. Now the front bumper's a uh, nice design with this uh, curve in the plastic. It gives it uh, a certain amount of flexibility before it gives up and uh, of course that's going to just add to the life uh, and durability of the item itself. 
So moving towards the back end of the vehicle now to the business end, I've just turned it around so you can see. So we've got tucked away onto the chassis down here. It's actually uh, black and probably quite tricky to see because it's so small. We've got the 2.4 gigahertz uh, radio receiver and you'll see that the aerial is literally just runs along the inside of the chassis. So there's no long uh, aerial antennas to stick out the top of your, your buggy unless of course you want to, st to, to, to have one. Um, then we've got the electronic speed controller which is mounted behind the driver now it's going to get plenty of fresh air up here because uh, the open uh, type of cockpit but it is protected underneath the uh, the body shell uh, roof and the, the roll cage so it's uh, it's a great position for that so it's going to get plenty of fresh air and be cooled yet um, it's uh, nicely protected uh, just in front of that you'll see the on off switch now it's uh, if you can imagine once the body shell is on could be quite tricky to reach that but as I've talked about before with the uh, the way that the body shell sort of flares out at the sides you can just get your fingers up inside and and switch that on and off particularly uh, if I can do it with my big hands and I'm pretty sure most people can uh, can, can get up there no problem now the ready radio being 2.4 gigahertz is great because you turn it on and it's already bound to the car when you get it so it's literally put the batteries in and away you go now obviously I've got the car on and the radio on here, uh, but I wanted to draw attention to uh, this thumb wheel here. Now on the steering side of things, you, as you'd expect, as you turn right, the wheels turn, as you can see. But you can turn and adjust the amount of steering lock you have. So if I turn this fully to the right, for example, and then with this here, you'll be able to see I can turn down the amount of steering. So now, I've only got a small amount. If I turn it up again with my thumb, I've got more, more lock. So you can uh, adjust uh, the amount of steering that you've got whilst you're driving. Uh, and that's really useful because um, if you have a, 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 a lot of physical lock under certain uh, conditions, that can make the back of the car very twitchy and, and step out. If you turn the amount of steering lock uh, available down, you've got better and finer control over the direction but also it prevents the uh, back end of the car stepping out so much but that that's something that you can adjust to suit your particular driving styles now obviously the radio being 2.4 gigahertz has a very short aerial that doesn't extend i've touched on that before the battery compartment is in the bottom so it gives it a nice feel in your hand and balance and as you would expect uh, you've got trim adjustments for both channels and you can reverse both channels here on the back of the handset as well as obviously the on and off switch. So that's the radio, really quite a nice uh, addition to this uh, great 8 scale buggy. So there we have it, uh, fun by the bucket load from this 8 scale June buggy from Acme. Now in fact the only thing that uh, would be great just to finish this off are the batteries for the radio. Now it takes 8 AA batteries and we do have them available in a rechargeable format here. So click through to those and be sure to check those out on the Nitrotech website along with the mains charger. Now those of you who do like your off-road that bit rougher, we do have some uh, optional upgrade parts for this buggy and they come in the form of these uh, really nicely anodized alloy front lower wishbone. So check those out as well, they uh, certainly were well worth considering if you like your off-road action that bit rougher. So that's it, uh, superb value yet again from Nitrotech with this uh, brushless buggy with 2.4 gigahertz radio. I hope you've enjoyed this uh, short video and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Thanks very much.